lovely darling viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy, and this time I'm doing another Top 5 Wednesday. As always, the Goodreads group is in the description below if you want to check that out. And this week's topic is Second Book is the Best. Um, I've just picked any middle book in a series for this. Um, but basically when I read a book series, my favorite book is either the first one in the series because of all the awesome world building and things aren't that complicated yet, or we've gone through the entire series and my favorite one is whatever one is last. And everything just gets wrapped up nicely. You have a pretty little bow on it basically. Your ships are settled. Um, so those are typically my favorites. So these are book series where actually my favorite one is somewhere in the middle. Um, and since I'm excluding first and last books, obviously these have to be book series of at least three books. So the first book on my list is City of Glass by Cassandra Clare. This is the third book in the Mortal Instruments series. The first book in that series I think is City of Bones maybe. So within this series and actually all of the Shadowhunter books, um, we have our world kind of existing in the foreground and then we have this shadow world in the background filled with demons and monsters and things. And Clary manages to find her way into this world and discover that she has some pretty cool powers. So for this series, the first three books kind of make up one story arc and it's its own like complete trilogy. And so this book kind of counts because um, it's wrapping up everything like the last book in the series would. But we're still continuing on. There's like another set of three books after it that make up a different story arc. So it has all my favorite parts about being the last book in a series where we've got our ship sort of settled a bit. Um, the one story arc is completely wrapped up uh, for the most part. Uh, and it just feels fun and and it just feels um, it feels nice. It's pretty. I love it. And as for the rest of the series, I kind of just felt like books four and five were repetitive. Like they were repeating, uh, like Clary and Jace both make the same mistakes over and over again. And after a while, it just gets annoying. But just reading the first three books, it's not so bad. And I really appreciated those. I kind of like to pretend that books four or five don't exist and I haven't even read book six yet honestly. The next book on my list is Voyage of the Dawn Treader by C.S. Lewis. This is the fourth or fifth book in the Chronicles of Narnia series depending on whether or not you count The Magician's Nephew as book one or The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe as book one. Um, anyway it's in the middle somewhere <laughs> and I love this book because all the fun of this world of Narnia where magic happens and this kind of medieval-esque fantasy world happening, um, but it's still a lot of fun. This one in particular I like because they go sailing and try to find the edge of the world, um, which is always just a cool concept to me. Like if if you're on a world that is flat um, and not circular like our Earth is, like at some point there must be an edge and I kind of want to know what's there. Um, so I really liked this part of that. Like pushing the boundaries and trying to figure out what's last. Um, also the mouse is so cute and adorable, um, even though he would probably not appreciate being called that. The next book on my list is Dead to the World by Charlene Harris. This is the fourth book in the Sookie Stackhouse slash True Blood slash Southern Vampire series, however you want to call this series. Um, but this is the book series that the television show True Blood is based off of. So in this book series we have vampires and they've figured out the synthetic blood that they can live off of so they can now come out of hiding and are just kind of part of everyday life. Um, but there's still this deep embedded culture within them where they're it's kind of this dark underworld sort of still even though they can technically be out among the living some of them still prefer um, you know drinking human blood or just the nightlife and stuff. So in this particular book we have Eric who is normally this very tough sort of vicious um I guess a kingpin maybe. He owns this nightclub in one of the big cities in Louisiana and just is in charge and sometimes he can be a bit brutal. He has viking blood in him and well I love him as a character in general but in this book he loses his memory and he doesn't remember any of his past. He doesn't remember being in charge. He doesn't remember that he's supposed to be evil. Um, 
and tough. So we get this uh, nicer, softer, sweeter version of Eric, and I love it. It's still him as a character, but it's like all the best parts of him. So I I love the fact that he loses his memory and becomes sort of this different side to his personality. Um, and I love his relationship with Suki, who's the main character of the series. Basically why this is my favorite. I totally ship Suki and Eric. They are fun. <laughs> I don't know if I want to be in that relationship, but I love watching the two of them. And out of all of the uh, romantic interests that Suki has, Eric's my favorite in the series. Then I have Once Upon Stilettos by Shanice Swanson. This is the second book in the Enchanted Ink series. I actually picked a second book, guys. So this is a world where magic exists. And specifically, there is a magic company called Magic Spells and Illusions Inc. And they produce spells for wizards, um, which is really cool. And we have this one character, Katie Chandler, who is immune to magic, which makes her very valuable because uh, magicians, wizards, can be fooled by magic. But um, Katie can see right through that. And I love her as a character. So this book, there are just several things happening in here, which I really love. Part of it has a Cinderella-esque feel with these red shoes playing a um, prominent part in this series, which I love. We also get to see Katie without her magical immunity as she loses that power. And she actually gets to see what magic is like for normal people, which I love. But she's also trying to put off this facade that she still has her immunity um, so that she doesn't lose her job. And there's the whole relationship with her and Owen, who was this really powerful, really rich, totally cute and handsome wizard um, who works in her company. And I just ship the two of them so hard. And so I love the way that their relationship progresses in this book. There's just so much that just makes this book my favorite one in the series. Um, also, there's like the Christmas party in here. And I just love that entire scene. <laughs> Um, of getting to see how wizards decorate and celebrate Christmas. And the last book on my list is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban by J.K. Rowling. This is the third book in the Harry Potter series. It follows the boy wizard Harry Potter as he goes to Hogwarts, a magical uh, boarding school, and learns how to be a wizard and also gets into crazy antics because kids living together plus magic equals fun. So throughout most of the series, we also have dark wizards after him as he has become the arch enemy of the darkest wizard ever, Voldemort. And Harry is constantly trying to A, figure out what Voldemort and the dark wizards are up to, and B, not die, basically. Um, it is such a vivid world, and I love it. So Prisoner of Azkaban is my favorite book in the series. Um, for one thing, we get to find out a lot about Harry's parents. Um, Harry's orphaned when we first meet him, and is being raised by an aunt and uncle. And then he finds out that his parents are actually really famous wizards. Um, and so in this book, we get to find out more about both his parents, but in particular, Harry's dad, James, um, who was a complete and utter troublemaker when he was in school. And just every new thing we find out about James in this book, like, I super love it. <laughs> um, like, I really wish we had books that just followed Harry's parents as they go through school. Also in this book, we have Professor... R.J. Lupin, who is the best Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher Harry ever has, and I super love Lupin as a character. We also have this plotline with the escaped uh, wizard Sirius Black on the run, and he's oh, and he's out to get Harry, so there's this whole different element. Like, it's not Voldemort-centric storyline. Like, most of the other books are about Voldemort coming after Harry, or Voldemort trying to do something, whereas this book is about Sirius, which I love. It's also just fun. Like, it's book three, so we know these characters well, and it's kind of the last book before they really hit puberty and start becoming teenagers and having all this teenage drama with relationships and stuff. I also love the ending of this book, which I don't want to spoil if you guys haven't read it, but it involves a fantasy science fiction type element that I'm super fond of and is an auto read for me. So those were my top five picks for favorite books in a series that fall somewhere in the middle. Um, let me know in the comments below if you have read and love or hate any of these particular books or what are your favorite middle books in a series. Um, or if you think a different book in one of these series is actually better than the one that I picked. That would be cool too. Peace out. I love you guys and keep reading.
Bye.